What, what other general guidance do you have for someone trying to break into commercial real estate like us? I think, um, I mean, one of our mentors, Nick Huber, talks about save up a bunch of money, right? That's a good place to start is save up a bunch of money, okay? Um, then where do you go, okay? Then I think you start asking yourself why you want to go to commercial real estate, right? So let's answer that. Why do we want to go to commercial real estate? I think we look at it like um, we need bigger deal size, okay? Or, or our business is ready for bigger deal size, okay? So that's why we're going to commercial real estate, okay? If you're along those same lines, then you start going, what asset class do you want to go to, right? And we do really well virtually. So we wanted something with, uh, you know, little management um, or on-site management required, okay? So that, that's what got us to, uh, to self-storage. And then I would say, and it's a long answer, but then I would say, you, you find the best people in the asset class and you start learning as much as you can from them, right? And they don't need to be people that run the REITs that are billionaires, but find the people that are two or three steps ahead of you, right? That, that aren't billionaires, but that are solid two to three steps ahead of you and start diving into them and, and learning everything you can, right? And we found some of those people and we're looking for more people that are two or three steps ahead of us and, and trying to uh, learn as much as we can from them. What, let me turn it back on you, Frank, because that was a hard question. You're asking really good questions, but that was a hard one. Yeah. Okay. If someone wanted to get into commercial real estate, what advice would you have for them? I'm going to go um, the funding route since you took a lot of the underwriting and deal finding stuff. So I think we had success um, with a local credit union for our deal. And I think that's a good approach. I think if you're talking to someone about doing an operational value add, someone who's maybe familiar, familiar with the area might be... Um, willing to give you good terms and be flexible on a deal. So I think raising bank funding or credit union funding ahead of time is good, or at least establishing those relationships. And I think um, I think you want to tell people about your business plan. So I think it's important to have one, or at least you don't want to have a hope and a prayer. What I mean by that is this, John and I, when we said we we're going to go into storage, we're like, hey, in the next three years, we want to have $75 million in asset center management. That's roughly 10 facilities a year based on our buy box, right? Then when I go to an investor and I'm like, hey, we don't have a deal that we're ready for you to invest in yet, but one's coming, right? This is what I think it's going to look like. This is our buy box. This is what we're looking for, blah, 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 right? You want to start having those conversations ahead of time because if you just randomly call someone and you're like, hey, uh, I need you to give me $100,000 because I got this random storage facility in Tulsa, Oklahoma, they're gonna be like, what the hell are you talking about, dude? I thought you were doing single family houses or whatever you were doing, right? So I look at that as like giving like a little bit of a warning or a warning order to your um, investor audience, like talk to them. Like you don't have to have a deal perfectly ready, but you got to at least communicate what your aim is. And uh, so people aren't surprised. So you'll catch them off guard. So I think on top of the underwriting stuff you covered, I, I would do those two things. Thanks for listening to the Virtual Real Estate Investing Podcast, presented by Grayline Investments, where we talk about how to find, fund, and finish deals from anywhere in the world.